There was a time when self-defense might have meant or this or this. But today, with targets frequently launched from great distances and traveling at supersonic speeds, self-defense must be a rapid-reacting, fully automatic weapon system. The NATO Sea Sparrow Surface Missile System is a point defense weapon system developed in a cooperative program between Belgium, Denmark, Italy, the Netherlands, Norway, and the United States. Initiated in 1969, it completed development and entered production in early 1974. NATO Sea Sparrow is intended for installation on a variety of U.S. ship classes, fluence class destroyers, fast combat support ships, ammunition ships, replenishment oilers, and attack carriers. Also, it is intended for installation on selected frigates and cruisers of the other participating NATO countries. During the development phase, a dual director model of the system, installed on the USS Downs, successfully demonstrated its performance against a wide array of simulated threats. Aircraft, air-to-surface missiles, surface-launched missiles, and cruise missiles. NATO Sea Sparrow also underwent operational evaluation aboard the Norwegian frigate KNM Bergen during the harsh midwinter conditions of the Arctic Ocean at 72 degrees north latitude. The NATO Sea Sparrow system consists of three major subsystems, which will be described in some detail. The guided missile fire control subsystem provides automatic acquisition and tracking of a designated target generates launcher and missile orders, and in the automatic mode, initiates the firing command when the target becomes engageable. The director group serves to acquire and track the target, and after launch, provides illumination for missile homing and fusing. It consists of two antennas, transmit and receive, a pedestal, and a director control unit. NATO Sea Sparrow can be configured to operate with either a single or dual directors as desired to fit the user's needs. Modulated microwave energy is supplied to the director by the transmitter group, while the microwave receiver signals are electronically processed by the radar target data processor to provide target detection, Doppler track, and range and angle track data. The radar tech console provides the display, monitoring, and control functions required for radar system operation. Specifically, it has provisions for radar search track display, target spectrum analysis, mode switching, electronic countermeasure indicators and controls, and kill or survival assessment. In the dual director model, there would be a radar set console for each director. The focal point of the fire control subsystem is the firing officer's console, which permits the operator to monitor and control the progress of the engagement. It contains a computer-driven engagement situation display, a radar status control indicator panel, a missile management control indicator panel, and firing panel. Although most of the system's operations are carried out by the computer under automatic or semi-automatic conditions, the control and indicators permit operator intervention and override at any time. The computer complex, core of the fire control subsystem, consists of a real-time general purpose computer and a signal data process. Together, they perform all computations data storage and data distribution required by the system. Some of the specific functions of the computer are control radar search acquisition and track, 
generate launcher pointing and missile orders, determine target engageability, provide target and engageability data for display, monitor system status and performance, and in the automatic mode, generate the firing command when the target becomes engageable. The signal data converter serves as the interface between the missile fire control computer and peripheral equipment. An ancillary piece of equipment to the fire control subsystem is the low light level television system. The camera is mounted on the director and bore sighted to the tracking radar beam. The TV monitor aids the radar set console operator in monitoring radar tracking, evaluating multi-target attacks, and assessing target kill or survival. The guided missile launcher subsystem has three major components. Launcher, launcher drive, and the interconnecting unit and maintenance panel. The launcher is a ready service magazine housing up to eight operationally ready RIM 7H missiles in weather type cells. During an operation, the launcher drive receiving commands from the fire control system, can rotate the launcher through 360 degrees and elevate it from minus five to plus 85 degrees. The third subsystem is the RIM 7H missile, a Sparrow 3 modified for rapid runoff. In addition, it is equipped with folding wings and clipped tail pins to decrease storage requirements to approximately 25 inches. The RIM-7H is a semi-active homing missile using proportional navigation. To maintain the NATO Sea Sparrow system, quick fault detection and isolation capabilities have been built into the system. Continuous online performance monitoring of critical parameters is carried out automatically by the system computer, and the status of these displayed on the system performance indicator and a coded digital readout on the front shelf of each console. Critical functions of each major subsystem are also continuously monitored and displayed on each console as go, degraded, or no-go. When a fault has been detected in a subsystem, extensive built-in test capabilities are used to further isolate the problem so that the faulty assembly can be rapidly replaced. In addition to monitoring and fault isolation, an ancillary test set is used with the launcher subsystem to simulate the RIM-7-8 missile and, in turn, test the launcher missile interface. NATO Sea Sparrow is a rapid reaction weapon system and, as such, can rapidly acquire targets and launch a missile within a few seconds of target designation. A wide variety of threats can be engaged by the NATO Sea Sparrow, including extremely small radar reflectivity targets traveling at velocities in excess of Mach 2. The system can engage targets from sea level to medium altitude and launch missiles at elevations up to 85 degrees. Four primary modes of operation are used with the NATO Sea Sparrow system. Ready, designate, track, and search. The ready mode exists when the system is ready for operation, but does not have a target assigned. All equipment is turned on. The launcher and director are in slow position, and the transmitters are radiating into a dummy load. When a target designation is received from an external or internal source, the system enters the designate mode. In this mode, a director is assigned, slewed to the target position, and the transmitter starts radiating into space. The director then scans the designated point until the target is acquired. The system will accept either air or surface designations, and the radar operator can also designate targets locally from his console. Once the system acquires the designated target, it enters the track mode. In this mode, the system can Doppler track air targets to long ranges. Electronically track surface targets to the radar horizon. Track targets in an ECM environment. 
and coast the radar to continue illumination of a target during target phase. Several casualty track modes are also provided in the NATO Sea Sparrow system. In TV track, the operator tracks the target using the television system. In the slave illuminator mode, the director is slaved to a remote three-dimensional tracking source to illuminate the target for missile homing when active tracking has been made impossible. A computer casualty mode enables the system to track and engage targets when the computer is disabled. The final primary mode, search, permits the system to use its own detection capabilities to search for either an air or surface target and automatically or manually designate the detected target. A typical NATO Sea Sparrow engagement begins when an external detection source designates the target to the fire control computer. The computer assigns a radar to the target and displays the designation on the firing officer's console display. When a target return is detected by the radar target data processor, the tracking loop is closed via the computer, and the radar symbol is displayed on the firing officer's console display. If the acquired target corresponds to the designated target, the radar symbol will be superimposed on it. The computer next performs engageability calculations on the tracked target and displays a predicted intercept point on the firing officer's console display. Prior to the target becoming engageable, the launcher is pointed at the predicted intercept point plus super elevation, and the missiles are run out. When the engageability light comes on, it indicates that the intercept symbol on the display represents an achievable intercept point. The firing command can then be initiated either by the computer in the automatic mode or by the firing officer in the semi-automatic mode. Missile in flight indicators on the firing officer's console and the radar set console are illuminated when the missile is away. Throughout the flight, the radar operator, by means of his Doppler return, television system, and displays, evaluates the firing, and then assesses the target skill for survival. Rapid reacting, automatic, and effective. The NATO Sea Sparrow Surface Missile System, when deployed aboard the ships of the participating NATO nations, will provide a potent capability for self-defense against current and future threats.